Hey guys, what's up? So today I want to talk about the actual mechanisms on how a GLP-1 makes you lose weight and then maintain weight. All the research and some of the science, my own personal experience, how uh, the differences between Ozempic, Wagovi, or semaglutide and comparing that to terzepatide or Manjaro Zepbound and how that works, the differences between them, how does it make you lose weight? What was the difference between just doing a caloric deficit and adding the GLP-1s in? And how does that help you actually lose weight more efficiently? How does it change things in your body? What are the mechanisms that occur? And let's go into all that great stuff so you could get a better understanding how it works and how you can also maximize it, who it's good for, who it's not, all that stuff. All right, so if you're new to the channel, my name is Jules. I've lost 50 pounds on a GLP-1. I've been on all of them. Started on Ozempic, then Wagovi, then went to compounding terzepatide, then Manjaro, and currently on Zepbound. I've been maintaining 113 pounds um, for two years now. And that's been a whole different journey as well and an interesting one. But today I wanna go into, the, again, the mechanisms and what are they and how it all works. So semaglutide or Ozempic and Wagovi, they're the same medication. Ozempic's just been FDA approved for diabetes and Wagovi for weight loss. And then we have the terzepatide, um, which is Manjaro, also approved for diabetes, and Zepbound, which is approved for weight loss and for sleep apnea, and potentially some other things coming down the road. So the differences to start off with are semaglutide is a single agonist. It's a single GLP-1 agonist, which means it acts on one signaling hormone, and they are peptides. So terzepatide, on the other hand, is a dual agonist, meaning two. It acts on two signaling hormones, GLP-1, which is in semaglutide, and a GIP, and that's the second one. GIP stands for glucose-dependent insulinotropic, or in other words, GIP. That is the second one. And then in research coming down the road, hopefully in the next year or so, there's going to be a triple agonist. So it's going to have the two that are in terzepatide right now, GLP-1 and the GIP. And then there's going to be a third one. Um, and that third one actually is going to help to increase metabolism. So that's pretty exciting. And that one is called retitrutide. So that's one that's going to be coming. It's in trials right now. People are having a lot of success with that. And the differences are in the mechanisms as well as the side effects. So people can have tremendous results on both of these. It really depends on how you're using them, what other lifestyle habits and behaviors you have implemented to go along with it. And then again, there's the side effects. So people that are on Ozempic, Wagovi, semaglutide, some of those people do tend to have more negative side effects. And if they get to a point where you can't handle them, then sometimes jumping on over to terzepatide is much better for you because there are less side effects on terzepatide. So how do they work? Essentially, they both kind of work in the same fashion. I'm gonna read off to you all the things that they do. So it slows gastric emptying, which makes you feel full for a longer period of time. It reduces your appetite or the food noise that goes on in your head. It enhances satiety signaling so that you know when you get full. It allows you to focus on life and be present in your life and not be thinking about food all the time. When's the next meal coming? When am I gonna get a dessert? How much am I gonna be eating? It allows you to be present in doing whatever it is you're doing and to actually focus on that without all that crazy food noise going on, which really is one of the biggest benefits of all. 
outside of weight loss. It helps you to stick to a calorie deficit. Look, we all been there. We know without a GLP-1, sometimes we're, you're just white knuckling it and you're just like, how am I gonna eat this few calories? I can do it for a certain period of time, right? We can all do it for a certain period of time, but then it comes to a point where your appetite just increases and then the food noise increases and it makes it really impossible to, to stick with that calorie deficit. But being on a GLP-1, it enables us to stick there and be able to lose the weight for a much longer period of time without making us crazy. The other huge benefit, it helps us to reduce the food cravings um, and that includes sugar and alcohol and, and other, they're looking at this for alcohol use, um, for other types of addictive behaviors. So it really reduces it or even eliminates those types of behaviors. I've um, heard of people who are shopaholics, they're not even interested in shopping anymore. I mean, I know me, I'll go online to go shopping and I literally get bored in like 10 minutes of shopping and I'm like, eh, I don't wanna do this anymore. Whereas, you know, I used to go on and, and buy something. So I think that's kind of interesting. So it really helps us with that impulse control as well. We're able to think through things a little bit more and be more patient. The, the GLP, it acts all over our body because our main receptors for GLP, GLP-1, are in our brain, are in our gut, and in our pancreas. However, we do have GLP receptors all over the body. So, but those are the three main areas that it acts upon. So who is a candidate for a GLP-1? Well, when it, obviously if you have type two diabetes, you can get it for that. And then from the weight loss perspective, if you have a BMI of 30 or above, you can get it. Or if you have a BMI of 27 and above, along with a comorbidity. A comorbidity is something that is weight, usually weight related, that will be mitigated if you lose weight. As an example, blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, well, sleep apnea has been approved, uh, FDA approved on ZepBound exclusively for that. But we also know that uh, if you lose weight, that also could help to mitigate the sleep apnea, but not everybody um, who has sleep apnea is necessarily overweight per se. And, and any other comorbid comorbidities that go along with having added weight, your doctor could usually find something. If you have BMI of 27 or above, there's usually something that they could have or that you do have as a comorbidity that can help qualify you for the medication. The problem is, will your insurance pay for it? Is it in their formulary? You know, that you have to check on to see if it's in there because it's really their option if they're choosing to cover weight loss drugs or not. But for those of us that have struggled with yo-yo dieting and weight cycling, it is such a game changer. People that have PCOS, myself included, Insulin resistance, that would be me, pre-diabetes, again, check the box on that one. It has been shown to, re to reverse all of that. People that couldn't get pregnant, that had PCOS, that never had a cycle. Uh, for those women, there are so many women that it regulates your cycle and your hormones that all of a sudden you get pregnant. So you gotta be really careful because if you think you can't get pregnant um, and you start taking this and you start losing weight and it starts regulating everything, uh, you better be super careful because um, now you're gonna be healthy and you could get pregnant. It has also been shown to help people with binge eating disorder. So if you have a tendency to binge, it has helped to mitigate that. It's like quieted that, that impulse and that, that noise. And if you've ever been that person, and I have, where you're like, you wander into the kitchen, you're bored, kind of hungry. I don't know, I'm gonna eat something. I'm not really sure what I want. I think this will satisfy me. No, it doesn't, I want something else. Like That's just gone. You just don't have it anymore. You're just like, eh, I wanna do something else and your mind goes somewhere else and you're not really thinking about like snacking or the next snack or what's really gonna hit you. It, it really is such a game changer. So let's talk about 
who this medication would not be good for. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is just from the research that I've done. You always have to consult your doctor whenever it comes to taking a GLP-1. I'm just sharing my experience with you and the research that I've done. Um, so it is not going to be good for somebody who is pregnant or who's breastfeeding um, or if you're, you know, a child, you know, it's only approved. Uh, Ozempic Wagovi, um, or should I say Wagovi is approved for children, I believe it's 13 and over and Zepbound 18 and over right now. That's what, who it's approved for. So take that into consideration from an age perspective. If you're somebody that has a very specific type of cancer, your doctor will screen for that. There is a black box warning. It is for medullary thyroid cancer. That's very, very specific. They found that cancer, but in rodents, not in humans. It's only been done in rodents and the rodent study, they were given super high doses of this, like higher doses than we would ever take. So again, you have to take that into consideration or your doctor will. It was found in rodents, super high dose, medullary, that's a very, very specific thyroid cancer. Most humans don't get it. So from that perspective, it probably wouldn't eliminate you, but always check with your doctor about that. If you have had it or there's a family history, bring that up in your appointment. And again, to maximize the effects of a GLP-1, because there are some people out there that say that it's not working for them or it, you know, they don't feel the appetite suppression or they're not getting the weight loss. For the vast majority of people, this is going to work, but it has to be coupled with the lifestyle changes. So to maximize the effects on the appetite suppression, the insulin sensitivity, um, the, the slower gastric emptying, you have to pair it with the right lifestyle, high protein diet, lift weights, get your movement in, get your sleep, mitigate stress, all of those things. It doesn't have to be done all at once, but if you start implementing each habit slowly and, and integrating more, it'll just become your new lifestyle. But if you haven't done any of that and you're saying, I'm just gonna take the shot and do nothing else, yeah, you might be one of those people where it's not really gonna have much of an effect. So I was one of those people where I did everything. I was doing all the right things. I was making the lifestyle changes before the GLP-1 and I just couldn't get that scale to budge. And when I went on the GLP-1, boom, all of a sudden the weight started to drop. However, along my journey, I'd still had to make different changes. I slowly integrated better habits and behaviors until I got to a point where it kind of settled in be to become my new lifestyle. I became a different person. I became the person I always wanted to be. And then I was able to get to my goal weight and now maintain for the last two years. So are you on a GLP-1 or are you thinking about getting on a GLP-1? What has been your experience? What are your thoughts on losing weight? How much have you lost? Where do you think your maintenance plan is going to be? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell button so you always know when the next video is coming. And if you wanna share this with a friend, would love to get this content out to more people because the more people that know what to do and how to do it, the more people we're going to get healthier on every level, mental, emotional, physical, and we want to support the community. If you're looking for more support and more community, I do have a, a private Facebook group that you can belong to. So just go onto Facebook, search Jules Wellness Warrior, and um, we are an amazing supportive community. I love being a part of. I will see you in my next video and stay strong.